to kick today off, listen, we're having uh, seven SANS experts in the booth with us today. You do not want to leave. Don't touch the dial. Don't change to another browser. Just leave your browser open. We are having seven people in the booth with us over the course of the next two and a half hours. We're going to be giving away amazing prizes, uh, so, but you need to be here when those giveaways happen. So to kick today off, I am extremely excited to welcome the amazing Heather Mahalik, SANS fellow, forensics expert, and a dear friend. Let's give it up. Thank you. How are you doing, Heather? Look at that welcome. That's nice. I'm great. How are you? I am fantastic. Day three is off to a great start, and I'm excited to have you in the booth with me. Thank you. Are you excited about RSA 2023? I am. It's RSA is overwhelming. I yeah. won't lie. There's a lot of people here, like we were just saying, but it's always great to see old, find new, yeah. learn new things. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your keynote happening later today. I'm just teasing that out. We'll dig into that a little bit more. But when we were talking earlier, and there's a theme going, you know, about, um, you know, our path into cyber, I thought it would be great for us to kick things off and talk about how you got started in cyber and, and what, what it was that drew you into the field. You know, I heard I was at a women's panel yesterday at KPMG, and one of the women said, after fifth or sixth grade, that's when girls lose interest in STEM, mm. which I didn't even know anything about STEM when I was in fifth or sixth grade. That was a long time yeah. ago. But I was in the right place at the right time yeah. in the Air Force and took a risk. But I often, I've walked through my story. I've written blogs on my website, smarterforensics.com, if you want to go on how I got started. Go Google Heather Pollock. Yeah, you can go check it out. <laughs> but what I think is really important is at SANS, we're trying to find the newer generation. So anytime I see a female or someone new in this career field in a class, I'm trying to make proper introductions. So Julia Gately is a perfect example. She just broke into Beaver within the last few years. So I think hearing from her story versus mine, right place, right time, had to learn what a hard drive was. I had no clue about anything computers. I could use spreadsheets and check my AOL. <laughs> and and are you ready for this? Change my MySpace wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the young young ones right now are, are googling MySpace. <laughs> That's what I could do. The the, the question uh, that has nothing to do with cyber is who was in your your, your top eight? <laughs> yes, I know, I know, it's crazy. But I had fantastic mentors, and that's a message that I will always push along: is find someone that inspires you, and let them naturally groom you, even if. Even if they don't think they're mentoring you, people mentor in ways they don't even realize. I love that about, you know, I, having seen your work, I mean, you do amazing work within the space. I have to commend you. It's, a, it's, it's very obvious to me as I watch you navigate that that's a part of your heart to impact and to help others kind of rise up in it the field, especially I think, women. Yeah, I think a lot of people forget where they started. Yeah. And it's a good gut check for yourself to think you are that new person. Mm -hmm. And even when I walk into rooms now, when I came down here on the floor yesterday, I was like, ooh, my introverted side wanted to come out. But I'm like, no, it's my job yeah. to talk to people and be open and just have those conversations. It's very important. So I only came into the cybersecurity space four years ago. And I was mentioning this last night. Um, you know, I'd walk the halls of our, our training events. And I, I'd almost light up if I saw you know, a woman, mm -hmm. make it, you know, a, a woman of color. And yet now I'm looking at this floor, you know, I attended a, a reception last night, seeing, you know, women in cybersecurity, I attended a Mises reception. You're seeing so much more women and people of color in the space. You know, does that excite you? Not it does, but we still need more. I, I was do. honestly joking. I was crossing in the crosswalk earlier and I was on the phone and I said, Wow, in a sea of 100, there's me. <laughs> Here I am. So you still feel... So we still need yeah, more. But yeah. I think people are becoming more confident that they do belong. And yes. I think that's super important is everyone belongs. Yeah. And I think even within diversity of race and gender, we need diversity of age. Yes. Because people get stuck in your mindset. Yeah. And I actually, I heard another talk last week in the UK, and someone said after the age of 30, your brain cannot change. 
So that's so. Yeah. So if we have different age groups, have people in their twenties and their thirties and their forties, all genders, all races at the same table. It's mm. so important. Yeah. So listen, coming back to the how you got started inside, well, I'm going to throw up a poll on the screen. I invite everyone uh, watching right now to hop on over to slido.com. There's a code on the screen. You can type that code in or scan the QR code on your cell phone and share, uh, you know, how you got started in Cybo. We'll look at... <laughs> I'm the look. last one. <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the results look like coming through in a, in a minute. But um, did you always know that you wanted to work in forensics? So, yes, but not digital forensics. Okay. I wanted to do blood stain pattern analysis mm. and crime scene investigations. Yeah. And I couldn't get a job without being a police officer. I had no interest in doing that. So I needed to find a way. And I was just waiting and patient. And then computer forensics landed in my lap. Was there, there somebody that inspired you, mentored you? So when I honestly started, no. I thought I was going to use that as a stepping stone. I got my first job. And I'll pop into something else that I wanted. But my first boss ever, his name is Sean Howe. He's still in the industry. He believed in me and taught me to validate evidence and understand what I'm doing and made me earn access to the tools. And he was willing to invest in me and train me. We did forensics every Thursday. Yeah. Like it was he made it fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, and you still keep contact with him now? I do. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, there was another person I used to work with named Steve. And he I could not do public speaking ever. I could do two slides and I had to memorize them. No one could ask any questions. And Steve was like, maybe next week you do three slides. I'm like, I'm never doing three slides. And he saw me speak about 10 years ago. And he's like, I I have no idea who you are. And he's like, you can hold a cup of coffee and naturally take sips and do all these things that yeah. you said you could never do. Right. So what's the advice to somebody? Start with two slides. <laughs> Seriously. And there are so many people that I have groomed that are now being SANS instructors that were afraid of public speaking. They were afraid to put themselves out there. Yeah. And I always recommend start at a virtual summit because you can have notes all over your desk. Yeah. You can have sticky notes behind the camera. No one sees that. And yeah, I think it's something that it's a muscle, right? You have mm -hmm. to continue to exercise it. Uh, as much as I do podcasting and video, I encourage people to get involved in Toastmasters, yes. you know, which is an organization to help you work through those ums and ahs and yes. pauses and so on. But yeah, you're you're amazing at this point. I want to be like Heather when I grow up. <laughs> so when others ask you how how to get started in VFOR or the broader cybersecurity space, um, what's your advice to them? So there are a few things. Um, SANS has a fantastic new to cyber program, and yes. I strongly recommend that. Um, there are so many free resources, specifically as an author of a SANS course. We record in the on-demand studio. And when we do these recordings, we record one free hour of material that's available for every single course. So deeper alone, you could get 16 hours of training. So even if, you, if you're interested, you need to find what interests you. Is it a certain person? Is it a topic? Is it a theme that you kind of want to go with? Because if you have Katie Nichols and I side by side, our interests are vastly different but we work really well together. Mm -hmm. So her track is obviously different than my track. So that's what I recommend is finding someone who speaks, almost like speaks to your soul yeah. that motivates you. Because yeah. if you can keep following that person, introduce yourself, start following them on social media, network, but start with the free stuff. Figure out what you want to do before you fully invest. Yeah, yeah. Um you touched on some of the things with new to Saiba. Are there any other key resources that, um, you know, SANS creates that we should probably be tapping into? Yes. Yeah, so obviously the new to cyber, yeah. um, all of the course demos, the posters, the tools, the live streams, there are white papers, webcasts. Uh, if you're specifically interested in deeper, you should go to the deeper summit and that is live yes. and in person. Yeah. in Austin, Texas. So live online, in person. I think it's one of the best events of the year. Clearly I am biased, but it's all new talks. It's people in the community. You're not going to get vendor sales pitches. It's a fantastic way to find people. Um, Jason Jordan, for example, he was found at a summit. Yeah. And now wow. look what he's doing for SANS. Absolutely. 
somebody we're talking with in uh in about an hour so you definitely yes. want to stay tuned for that same thing with megan roddy yeah. you know megan's first talk was keynoting the first summit last year i did not know that it's wild so Brilliant. Difa Summit, I started working for Sands in 2019, and it was the first summit event attended and just blew my mind. And watching you guys, you know, as, as much as other people attending looked at you as the rock stars of the space, I just remember seeing how humble and engaging you and Rob and Phil were and you know it, it was just a delight it was <laughs> thank you we love it we sure do love it we we, we need a, a pan to rob lee doing uh, uh <laughs> moonwalk Some across the floor <laughs> <laughs> but um if you could go back and do anything different in your journey in cyber question is would you I would, and I actually, I caught some flack on this one. I just did, there's an article written about me recently. It's like, what's some advice you would give to someone? And I, my dad is old school. Yeah. So he's very much like, when you get a job, you stay with that job. Uh, like, this is who you retire with. And I wish I didn't take that advice. I wish I job hopped a little bit more that not so much because that looks bad on your resume, but move to different cities, experience different cultures, different workplace environments versus when I was 29 years old, I feel like I landed hard where I still kind of am. And it's great. It's been a great career. But I I'm 22 it. to 29. I, I would have loved it. to live in New York City. Yeah. I had an opportunity in London and I didn't take it because mm. I was afraid. So take the opportunities. 100%. You can always go back. And, uh, you know, as you said, uh, it looks bad on the resume. Like, maybe in the immediate but years down the road yeah. it won't show yeah and that's the thing like i look at resumes if i see someone that every year leaves yeah people won't want to hire you because they want to invest in your training they that's don't want to do things like that but if it's like two years and you have a reason you outgrew that team 100%. where there was a different opportunity then it can make sense so you just have to make sense of your job hopping yeah and not be chaos yeah. you don't want to be frogger but you want to get to that other side of good things <laughs> So we, we talk about getting into Cybo. You're in Cybo. You're a curriculum lead with SANS. You're a course author. Um, you're an amazing speaker, as we touched on, delivering an amazing keynote today. I'm, I'm claiming it uh, in advance. But we, we touched on this just before we started talking. You're also a mom. Yeah. Um, how do you balance um, you know, the, all of this? It's a lot. It's yeah. a lot. I'm not going to lie. I've been on the road the last five and a half weeks. Um, uh, I still have made it to some soccer games and yeah. baseball games, so I try my best there. But I try, I try to balance as much as possible and try to do better at saying yes to the things that are truly going to make a difference. Yeah. So Kate Marshall said to me once, if the answer is not heck yes, then it should be no. Mm. So can I find someone else to fill that yes? Yeah. But unfortunately for my kids, the last few weeks have been a big heck yes. Mm. But I think that's really good to think about it. Yeah, that's that's a, a gem right there. Um, so once again, I'm going to highlight, uh, you know, you're delivering a keynote today with four of the amazing people, uh, the five most dangerous new attack techniques. That's going to happen for those of you here at the show. Uh, at RSA Conference 2023. That's going to happen in Moscone West, level one at 3.55 p.m. Pacific today. If you're not here, I believe you can watch that on our live stream, not this one, but through the show, uh, you'll be able to access that. Um, can you, I know you can't tell us about what the, the body of that is, but um, tell us from a high level if the threat landscape is, is being impacted um, by the new generative AI tools like a chat GPT. Okay, so um, without giving anything away, two of us are going to be discussing that from, from really opposite perspectives. Love it. Um, something that I have done the last few years is try to make everyone in the audience realize they're attackable. So I try to do mm -hmm. personalized, everyday human attacks. Yeah. Because not all of us are going to have some giant freak happen to us, thank goodness. But yeah. I as a clue i decided to try to use ai to fish my nine-year-old really yes. so tell me more we're going to learn some securing the family what? as well 
but I have clearly secured him really well. He would not give in. And something that I don't know that I'll have time to say, but his biggest thing was I prepped him saying, hey, this is mom. It's going to be me trying to talk to you as this fake person. And he understood that. But he's like, how are you doing this? And I told him chat GPT. And he said, isn't that a robot? And I was like, well, kind of. And he's like, what if the robot gets hacked? I'm not telling you anything. Wow. So I'm like, he's nine. And his mind is like, I'm not telling you anything because that robot's going to store that information. I know what you do. So it's kind of, that's pretty that's cool. That's something though. I have to do I like next. That. Yeah. Stay tuned for that webinar. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested <laughs> as the parent of a almost nine year old. <laughs> but it can be used for good. And that's one of the big messages is we're, people get so excited and then also fear what's new. We have to learn how to leverage it and to our benefits. Mm. Because all good things can be used for bad. Yeah. hundred percent. Hey, though, I am so excited for you, and, and I'm going to be in attendance uh, today. Thank you. you know, um, anything else you want to share before we wrap? Um, say hi. Say hi not only to me. Say hi to everyone. If you're here in person, meet someone new. Make a new contact. 100%. Spread the good word of deeper. <laughs> Beyond your talk, is there anything else you're excited about seeing while you're, while you're here? Well, I was really excited. I rarely get to attend talks. Um, Mattia is doing an Apple Lab coming wow. up here at 115. I'm very excited for that one. But I was able just to watch Wendy, Leslie, and Katie do a panel on incidents. And it's so nice just to see people that I respect in this community being honored on a stage and yeah. everyone listening. It's so yeah. great. Love it. Love it.